Covering the Northern Bahamas? You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. The Bahamas Agricultural and Industrial Corporation reinforcing its Buy Bahamian message. This weekend, the corporation hosted another pop-up pop market, and residents of Grand Bahama were able to purchase locally grown produce. Italia Hall was there. Despite the unstable weather conditions, residents turned out in big numbers to purchase fresh Bahamian produce from the Bahamas Agricultural and Industrial Corporation pop-up market. It marked the third time that the pop-up market came to Grand Bahama. Originally, it was held on the grounds of BAIC, but financial controller Carvin Calmer says this time around the decision was made to move the market to the Independence Park. Coming off of the last time we were here, we listened to, to the people and it was um, congested at the, at the office site. So we searched around and we looked for the best venue and this proved to be, proved to be a, a good move for us. Um, despite the inclement weather, it, it still panned out and we were able to, to really provide and service, service the clients. There were lots of sweet peppers goat peppers, avocados, lettuce, and much more. We have um, Cat Island, Eleuthera, Andrus, um, I think some abaco, some items, some abaco, um, and we bought purchased stuff locally from, from, the, from the local farmers here. So they're from across the, across the Bahamas, um, and we are trying to keep the prices um, at a manageable level and affordable level. Residents say this is something that they look forward to. Well, I heard it on the news, and it's very good. Because the last time they were here, there was a bike, and honey, it was, it was too much hassle, so I promised not to come back. But then it's nice now, so I say I enjoy myself. I'm into fitness, so anytime I have the opportunity to um, get some um, organic, homegrown vegetables and fruits, I'll definitely be there. This is my type of thing, so... Yeah, I'm impressed. Well, it's much more cheaper than going to the grocery store. Well, I just heard about it, and I'm really into eating healthy food, so I wanted to try and see what we are doing here in the Bahamas as far as fresh produce is concerned. Italia Hall, ZNS Network News. Meanwhile, students and staff of Jack Edward High School kicking off their annual Pride Week. A list of activities are being planned to display Wildcat Pride. This morning, the school's first order of business was to celebrate past principal, Mrs. Yvonne Ward. Megan Shepard was there. Jack Hayward High School dubbing the first day of Pride Week as Mrs. Yvonne Ward Day in honor of the school's former principal. Ward arriving in grand style to the school's gymnasium where past colleagues and students pay tribute to the now district superintendent. Current principal Bronwyn Smith says that Pride Week is all about celebrating all people and all things Wildcat. Pride Week we are interested in highlighting positives that occur with the school, increasing school spirit, and just celebrating and taking ourselves away from just their general instructional activity and actually showing ourselves and others that we are proud to be Wildcats and we are always striving to do the best at all times. The lady of the hour, Mrs. Ward, says that she is so excited to be celebrated by the students and staff of Jack Hayward. I feel so blessed um, that Jack Hayward Senior High School has decided to honor me in this way. Um, it, it started this morning, I, I asked my husband, I said, oh, so aren't you driving? He said, no, and then the limo pulled up. So I know that this is going to be a wonderful day. Uh, already, I feel um, the love from Jack Haywood Senior High School. Jack Haywood, it grows on you. You become a wildcat automatically once you come here. Uh, the teachers, you know, the administrators, the students, they're so loving. Retired principal Angela Burroughs says she recalls Ward as a very loving colleague. Mrs. Ward was the senior mistress. And I just admire the way she treated her students, the respect they held for her. And she was a disciplinarian. When it came to her colleagues, she tried the best to get along with everyone. And I will always remember her kindness to everyone and the respect she showed for everyone. Smith says that various activities are planned for the rest of this week. We have a Mr. and Ms. Jackie with Senior High School. Yeah, we started last year and we are 
continuing for this year with it. We also will be having a speech competition that will happen between the houses because this is also a week when the houses also compete in talent, in um, sports, in intellectual activities. We also have a Jeopardy competition. And so we, and also a talent competition. So we look forward to a lot of fun and laughter and excitement. And also we also can be stimulating our brains at the same time. Megan Shepard, Sedinus Network News. Thank you, Megan. Well, members of the Bahamas Dance Theater are returning home from a dance competition in West Palm Beach where they went up against some of the region's best dancers and they were able to walk away with the win. Rumiko Knowles was there and he caught up with the winners and he filed this report. Smiles on the faces of the young ladies from the Grand Bahama Dance Theater after taking part in a nationwide dance competition titled Shake the Ground and placing first in the solo and group dance. Coach and choreographer Colette Parker says this is their first time competing off-island and she is feeling great about the outcome. Oh, I can't describe the feeling. I mean, we've been trying to do this for a while now and to actually go abroad and be successful is just a thrilling feeling. The parents, they were so excited and they were so supportive the whole time. Um, everybody was just screaming and some of the girls even cried. It was a thrilling experience, very emotional as well. In addition to the solo and group dance, the young ladies also won the Aspire Award along with a few others. Coach Parker says the girls worked really hard and are deserving of the win. The preparation was a little tedious. Um, the girls didn't have that much time to prepare. Um, we had about four months of intense training, a lot of weekends, a lot of late nights here at the studio. But um, I feel like they did an exceptional job when we went to West Palm Beach last, week, last weekend. As little girls only imagining what it would be like to compete in dance competitions, Roche Nottage and Wainisha Thompson say they are grateful for the experience. Santa was my first. It was very scary. But at the end, I get excited because I got an award. And I didn't know what to do because I was excited. Anybody could dance. Just believe that you could dance. Don't care what people say. Even if like you think you look bad, you look good. It don't matter what people say because other people have different ways of dancing. I was extremely happy and proud that I got this experience and I hope it's one out of many that will happen. Like she said, many people have their own style of dancing and if you feel as if you don't have no rhythm and you come to the studio and you get more experience, they'll teach you, you'll become more advanced and you'll just fall in love with it because I surely fell in love with it. Now the young ladies also qualified for the Nationals to be held in Orlando, Florida in June of this year. Ramiko Noltz, ZNS Network News. Thanks Ramiko and congrats kids. That's a look at stories making news. Now it's time to ask the doctor. And welcome. Dave from NASA asked, Dr. Pratt, every year I make a New Year's resolution to be healthier, and every year I fall back into the same old patterns. How can I make my New Year's resolution stick to have a healthy New Year? Dave, thank you for your question. The truth is, improving our health is one of the most common New Year's resolution, but most people fail within weeks of making it. The old saying, if we fail to plan, then we plan to fail is always true. But it's especially true about New Year's resolutions in regards to our health and wellness. So Dave, you need to spend more time preparing and planning. It's important to make yourself and your health a priority and get the commitment in place. Have a specific goal. You may say, I like to lose some weight or I want to exercise more. But it would be better to say, I want to walk 30 minutes six days a week or I want to lose 50 pounds by next summer. The trick is, when it comes to setting New Year's resolutions, whether it is health goals or personal, always set goals that are realistic. You will have more success in sticking to them and achieving them. I'm Dr. Monique Pratt and this has been Ask the Doctor. Hey, that's Ramiko Knowles at the Jack on Sports when we come back. 